very good evening friends meeting again in the session of kent's philosophy and we have started discussing about the new chapter from the steward clause that is chapter number 36 the second prescription second prescription is nothing but the prescription after the first one has been acted and then we have to think about the second prescription earlier chapter where we have discussed about the remedy reactions and the homeopathic physician should be acquainted with all those 12 observations kent's observation on the basis of which he might he must think about the second prescription so there are three types of second prescription which kent has explained in this chapter first that is the either it may be the repetition of the same remedy either in same potency or in increasing potency or in different potency number 2 either it might be a antidotal prescription or third it might be a complementary out of which in detail in length we have discussed about the first variety that when it is necessary to repeat the remedy or repeat the remedy in high potency and he has given multiple examples that when case comes to the stand still and patient's complaint sir <coughs> he he has felt better with the first remedy but it not completely recovered but still the state remains to be the same then you have to go with the the repetition of the same so we have to go little bit high than the earlier potency when four type of observation that is no aggravation at all comes many times we have to remain with the same remedy because symptoms returns with the same pace and then you have to go little bit high potency so that is the fourth observation where you may need this is the repetition of the first and last condition which we have, which he has explained over there where the original symptoms returns after some time and they are of equal strength with same state then it is the time to repeat the remedy in the higher potency so that's what we have discussed up till now let us go with the second type of second prescription which he starts from the next paragraph so we'll start with the next uh, next one another reason for making a second prescription is the appearance of lot of new symptoms taking place of the old symptoms the old symptoms do not return but new symptoms come in their place the patient says well doctor you have cured me of those symptoms i had but now i have these the doctor after examining carefully those these new symptoms immediately looks up the pathogenesis and it is possible that he will find these symptoms in the drug that he has administered and then it looks like proving he asked the patient if he ever had these symptoms before never to my recollection doctor cross examine him carefully to see if he is not mistaken until it seems that there are they are really new symptoms if so the remedy has not acted properly it was not homeopathic to the case and it was an unfortunate prescription because it has caused the disease to progress in another direction developing another group of symptoms this coming up of new symptoms means that they must be antidoted if it is possible so he starts with second type of second prescription when it is necessary to antidote and most common thing to be antidoted that when new symptoms starts arising after the first prescription it indicates that your medicine started proving and it has started it is not a homeopathic aggravation that the original symptoms of the patients are increased but there are absolutely new symptoms accessory symptoms are started arising and it indicates that whatever remedy you have chosen is a not perfect stimulum and if it is so and if it is of a severe character then definitely you have to antidote if it is not of a severe character then one must follow the rules which anemon have explained in the 6th edition of organ of medicine that you have to take into consideration the remaining symptoms of the case that plus additional accessory symptom make a new totality and find it out a new remedy and go on if it works completely patient gets cured if it never works completely again you have to follow the same method 
So this is this is the method which you have to follow, either or either it should be antidoted. If it is of a severe character, the antidote is necessary. If it is not of a severe character, then this method you have to follow. The new symptoms combining with old ones must be again studied, and second remedy must be correspond to most more particularly to the new than to the old. It may cause the new symptoms to disappear and possibly have an effect upon the old one. Any subsequent prescription takes into account of the thing, all the things that have preceded, preceded it, all the conditions that have arisen, and third, fourth, fifth, or sixth prescription have the same difficulties to surmount that are to be surmounted in the second. If the first prescription was an unfortunate one, then all the others made with difficulty and fear. So then, if it is not of a severe character, then you have to follow that Hanuman's idea. That is the whatever the remaining symptoms, old symptoms are there, plus newly added symptoms. That is what is called as accessory symptoms. Make a new totality and find it out. A new similimum for the case. If you give new similimum, if it is perfect, then patient will get cured. If it is not perfect, again the same thing will happen. It will. Some symptoms will disappear, some remains, and newly added symptoms will be there. Again, you have to follow the same method. But this will be a zigzag cure if you don't find it out a right remedy in the first thing. If the A drug has to be antidoted with B, then the potencies of AB should be the same or more or less. Uh, there is no fixed rule regarding the potency selection when antidoting. Uh, because it depends upon the situation. If you would have given 1M to the patient, but if the present state is not having that much high susceptibility, then you might require 30 also. It, you might require 200 also. It varies from individual to individual. It is not fixed. It depends upon that specific situation. So, uh, you, you should not make such a rule. Second important thing, my suggestion already I have given to you that instead of giving anti specific antidote to that remedy, it is always better to antidote it with strong coffee. That will be a better antidote if you would, if any, if you want to antidote by any means. Simple way of antidoting is giving strong coffee. It works uh, in simple manner in such types of cases. And that's why I used to give, uh, if I want to antidote, I used to ask the patient to take a strong coffee instead of giving a fixed specific antidote. It is rarely the case that new prescription becomes necessary when the case merely comes to standstill. The first prescription has been made and symptoms commence to change in an orderly way. They change and interchange and new symptoms come up, but finally the symptoms go back to their original state, not marked, marked enough to be of any importance without any special suffering to the patient and the patient has arrived at a state of standstill. The patient says, I have no symptoms yet I am not improving. I seem to have come to a standstill position. He says this as to himself, not as, a, as to the symptoms. He has come to, the, to a standstill. It is the duty of the physician then to wait and wait a long time. But if after many months no outward symptoms have appeared, no external tendency of the disease, it is true that another dose of same medicine will not do harm and same remedy is the only one that can be considered. A new one cannot be entertained because there is no guide to it, but another dose of the same medicine can cause the patient to jog along the way of feeling better, but there should never be any haste about it. Wait a long time and when wait long time when patients come to stand chill, but when as the first instance the return of the original symptoms is observed, then you have some guide to administration of the medicine. So another thing which is explaining that if your remedy has acted and certain features, certain symptoms have disappeared, but patient is not yet completely cured. And patient feels he is not completely cured, but he has been in a standstill position. Then don't get in a hurry to change the remedy or to repeat the remedy. 
here you have to wait and wait long time because if it returns back to the original symptoms then you can give the remedy in a higher potency if it starts showing some new more symptoms then you have to change the remedy it ultimately depends how the patient takes the direction you should be very watchful regarding the progress and that's why you you must not be hurry in changing the prescription in such types of cases when the patient's case becomes standstill then he explains the second the second prescription then technically speaking is the prescription after the one has acted this is the definition of second prescription you may administer dozen remedies without having any effect upon economy and yet no prescription has been administered that has been specific you may pull away much time in administering remedies that are not related to the case the result is same consider the first prescription the one that has acted and that one that has effected changes and subsequent to that the next prescription is second one so here he explains that the definition of what is exactly mean by second prescription if you would have given dozen of remedies that's what he says but they have not shown any change in the patient that means your first prescription is not yet acted you cannot say the another remedy as a second prescription it is so simple that if the rem if whatever remedy which has acted in any way that has made the change in the patient then you have to think about second prescription till that period it remains to be one and same so first important thing is that what what do you exactly mean by second prescription if you know that then you can think about second prescription and that definition he has made it clear over here the second prescription technically speaking is the prescription after the one has that has acted the next thing we have to consider is the change of remedy in the in a second prescription under what circumstances we must change the remedy one instance i have mentioned when striking new symptoms appear and there is an entire change of the base in the symptom so that the headache perhaps which has lasted long time disappears after the administration of the medicine when new group of symptoms appears somewhat somewhere in the body relative to the patient and such as the patient has never had this new group of symptoms means that a new remedy must be considered and under such circumstances the change of remedy will be the second prescription and second prescription in this case calls for the change of remedy so if new symptoms have started arising but those symptoms are not of a severe character there are few original symptoms which are hello are you getting my voice yes sir yes okay the many times it happens that you get certain group of symptoms out of which if you would have uh, made a totality of eight symptoms but you never get a very perfect simile you would have given a remedy that covered five symptoms and five symptoms have vanished but three remains and there is appearance of three more so now there is a state where you have three old symptoms plus three accessory symptoms that is newly arrived so you have to again make a totality and then definitely a remedy changes this is the time which where you have to take into consideration the new remedy and that is what is called as change of remedy this happens instead of antidoting you have to go for change of remedy in such types of cases antidote is necessary when the things becomes rather dangerous either it is first type of homeopathic aggravation that is long continued aggravation followed by final decline of the patient or if there is there are the new symptoms which arises are very grave character third it the patient takes a absolutely wrong direction and going in from less important organ to the vital organ then it definitely desires a antidotal remedy but when things are not so vigorous 
then definitely you have to go with the, this change of remedy or second prescription as the change of remedy. And this is what he is explaining over there. We will suppose another instance where the remedy must be changed. A patient has been for years under the treatment of constitutional chronic disorder. <clears throat> and you have gone through the potencies ranging from lowest to the highest and they have acted curatively. You have administered the different potencies, repeating the same potency until it would not act any longer and then going higher until you have gone through the whole range of potencies. You can repeat that remedy many times on a paucity of symptoms when you cannot give another remedy simply because it has demonstrated itself to be the patient's constitutional remedy. This remedy should not be changed so long as the curative action can be maintained. Even if the symptoms have been changed, do not change the remedy, provided the patient has continuously improved. If the patient says he has improved continuously, and though it would be impossible for you at this date, from the present symptoms to select that remedy, hold on to that remedy. So long as you can secure improvement and good from it, though the symptoms have changed, many physicians say, if the symptoms change, I change the remedy. And that is the one of the most detrimental things that can be done. Change the remedy if the symptoms have changed, providing the patient has not improved. But if the patient has improved, Though the symptoms have changed, continue the remedy so long as patient improves. Underline this sentence. This is what where he has made the things very clear. If there are change of symptoms, but the patient is improving, means patient is going in right direction. If he is going in right direction, then it is time that to wait instead of changing the remedy, keep with that remedy and continue with that remedy. If the change of if there is there are changes in the symptoms and patient is becoming detrimental or patient is going in wrong direction, he is getting worse, he is getting weak, his vitality is becoming less, or patient starts showing some strong symptoms, then it is definitely a thing where you have to change the remedy. Change the remedy if the symptoms have changed, provided. The patient has not improved, but if the patient has improved, though the symptoms have changed, continue that remedy so long as the patient improves. Very often, patients are giving forth symptoms long forgotten. So, when patient is improving and there is change of symptoms, that means that old forgotten symptoms are recurring back. The patient has not heard them, has not felt them, because he has become accustomed to it, to them like the tickling or in the or the striking of the clock on the wall many of the symptoms that appear the slighter changes that occur are old symptoms coming back the patient is not always able to say that they are old symptoms returning but finally the doctor <laughs> finally the doctor or somebody in the house will delight you by saying that her mother had these things years before years ago and she has forgotten them. This is likely to be the case when, whenever a patient is proving. So, so long as curative action can be obtained and even though symptoms have changed, provided the patient is improving, hands off. Whenever in doubt, wait. Underline this. This is very important. Whenever in doubt, wait. This is the best thing one must do. One should not be hurried. It is a rule after that, after you have gone through a series of potencies, never to leave that remedy until one or more dose of the higher potency has been given or tested. But when this dose of the higher potency has been given and tested without effect, that is the only means you have of knowing that this remedy has done all good it can for this patient and that the change is necessary. So, he is giving you exactly when to change the remedy and when not to change the remedy. If you are giving the remedy and patient is improving and patient is going in right direction and the few symptoms, new symptoms have been aroused, but patient never recollects that, but the patient's daughter or someone relative can say you, yes, doctor, this was there with my mother, this was there with my father. 
then you are quite sure that there are old symptoms coming back. It indicates that the patient's direction is going in a reverse way. And if it is happening, it is definitely a good sign. And then you have to wait. Then you have to go for a little bit higher potencies, higher dilution, if necessary. And unless and until the action of the remedy is completely get finished, you should not change the remedy. So changing of remedy immediately after the um, there is a change in the symptoms makes you to spoil the case. And that's why he has very, very clearly mentioned about when to change remedy and when to antidote the remedy. I think we will finish over here because here the second type of prescription, say a second prescription is finished. That is the change of remedy or antidote to the remedy. The third one he starts with next paragraph, that is the complementary. And that we'll learn in tomorrow's session. Second important thing, if there is no DJ outside or if there is no sound pollution, then we'll continue with the uh, at 15 lecture uh, with the new group, the carbon group of remedies. But if there is a mm, sound pollution, then it is very difficult to con continue with lecture. I will let you know whether I will take that lecture or not. I will send you the message regarding the at 15 lecture. Till that period, thanks a lot attending the session and good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you.